So that means that this, this object, it had to start with an X cubed term, right? Because if we were to take the derivative of an X cubed term, it would become an X squared term. But now we just have to fiddle with, well, what constant out front do we need so that we end up with a two after taking the derivative? Yeah, so we need a two thirds. So check it out. If we were to take the derivative of that, the three is going to come down, cancel this three in the denominator, and we're going to be left with two times X squared. And then, well, look at this. We have a five here. So, well, that's a little bit like easier to see. The antiderivative of that should be five X, because now we're looking for something whose derivative is always five. So that's five X, again, by the power rule or by a number of different ways. And then, well, this says an antiderivative. So this is good. This is an antiderivative. That being said, it's kind of best practices to put a plus C just and then think of that plus C as being any constant. So now look at this. If we were to take the derivative of capital F, as we discussed, this two thirds X cubed is going to become two X squared. This five X is going to become five. And then the derivative of a constant is zero. So that disappears, right? 